Anyone that's been to prison, whether that's federal, state, it doesn't matter. They would tell you that the guards may watch the prison, but at the end of the day, the inmates run it. Because at the end of the day, it's prison. It's a prison system based, and these are called prison politics, enforced by the inmates, not the DOC. Let's get into this video. Hey, what's up guys, JC? I am Rowan the Strong. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment. If you're part of my Wrong the Strong crew, Familia Raza, you already know, Subanse la Suburban. Let's put some gas on it because we're going for a ride. All right, guys, we're going to talk today about shot callers. You've, there's been movies made about them. There's, it ain't no secret. I ain't spilling the beans on shit. It's out there. It is what it is. If you go to prison, guess what? You're going to have to deal with it because it's called prison politics. It is everywhere. Whether that's state, federal, shit. Even when I was in Mexico, there was still somebody in charge of the unit. And that's what it is. That's what it has to be. And that's, that's it. You know, I get questions all the time. What if I'm not in a gang? What if I'm not this? What if I'm not that? Guess what? If you commit a crime and you go to prison, whether that's federal, state, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to choose who your group is and who you're going to sit and eat with and who you're going to get down and dirty with. Yes. There is no ifs, and or buts. Point blank, guys. What is a shot caller? A shot caller is the top top leader of the prison system. It could either be the guy that calls it for the unit or has the whole yard. Usually when it's a really big group, they'll have each each individual at every unit, say there's eight units, they'll have you know eight guys for, per unit and then they have the main guy that oversees the whole yard. That is a shot caller. He has the keys to the yard. And usually a shot caller's job is to actually maintain order, order for him and his people. You know, a shot caller does, doesn't order fights and order hits. Uh, no, he actually has to be very, very diplomatic and has to negotiate with other groups, other cars, other races, all that. His job is to keep the peace as long as he can for his people so shit can run smooth on the yard, in the unit, you name it. It's, it's keeping a level head, pretty much. He has to keep a level head when everybody in the prison is ready to fight. It is the shot caller's job to resolve the chaos, making decisions to give either the red light or the green light, pretty much point blank. This is why they'll never put a warrior in a shot caller position because what he'll do is he'll want to go to war every time he has a chance. And guess what? Your people get sent to the hole, you get transferred, and everybody is done. You know, you have to keep your interests above yours, and it's all about your group. It, it, it is what it is. But some people actually become shot callers just because of uh, ego. And let me tell you, they don't make it very far. I've seen it years and years and years and years, you know. But the reality and the truth is, you know, I know, I know if you've guys seen millions of videos of on these prison channels and, and everything about, you know, shot callers. And at the end of the day, throughout my years of being in the system, a shot caller is very, very interested in how full his locker is, not yours. <laughs> I hate to break the news to you. You know what I mean? It, it's... You know, I, I ran into, I've ran into good leaders and bad leaders. I've had my share of both, you know, and sometimes these individuals are 
nobody's on the street. So when they get this position in the system, it almost becomes like a, a power, you know, uh, it, it makes their head big and they start treating their fellow, you know, inmates like, like shit. They start sending them to do stupid stuff, taking care of business, whatever you want to call it, but it's uncalled for. I seen this happen with one of the guys that had, he had two weeks left to go home. And the guy that had the keys for our car wanted to send him to go take care of something just because he actually had got close to him. He liked him, not, not in that, not in that way. Not in that way, he just liked him. He got close to him because he spent a lot of time with him. The whole two years, they used to walk the yard together, everything together, and he was getting ready to go home, and he didn't want to see him go home. So he sent him to go take care of business, and he caught another three years. Had to stay around. And this is what I mean, is that I've always told everybody, I share my experiences, my stories, to educate, have some fun, maybe laugh, maybe cry, all these things so you guys could be like, man, I don't want to go to prison. <laughs> I don't want to go to prison, what? and if you know somebody that's there, maybe give them some advice, somebody that's coming in new to the system. But, yes, you have good ones, you have bad ones, and that's just the way it is. Prison changes you with time. I don't care what anybody says. It changes you, it makes you almost like you're in a jungle and you have to do what you have to do to survive. You make it to yards that are not a lot nicer than others. Some of them are just really bad and you just completely turn into a savage, an animal, and you're just doing what you have to do with your car, your people, who you're sitting with, who you're eating with, who you're doing dirt with, and that's what it is, pretty much. You're actually busier if, you're, if your people are bringing in phones and just taking care of business then your your car is very very active you're doing a lot of dirt you're doing a lot of stuff and you know sometimes you fall into the whole you know politic thing and you have to do what you have to do you have to get down you have to prove yourself you have to do what you have to do whether you want to or not and that's just what it is it's there is no way around it there's also a lot of guys that you know, they get to the yard and, you know, especially with my car, there was a lot of guys that would get to the yard and they would be like, hey, so, you know, I found God and I want to start going to church and hang out with the Christian brothers and I don't want to be involved with the politics and stuff like that. My car actually allows that. Like, if you're actually 100% going to change your life and you're going to be doing the church thing and, 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 and living and walking the walk, then they allow it. But if you say that and then we find out you're smoking spice, you're getting high, you're shaking up with other, other you know, uh, members and stuff like that, then they're sending the suburban to get you. They're going to pick you up. And that's what it is, point blank. There's a set of rules, a set of politics that are not written on paper, but are very, very known among inmates. To the smallest thing of not even putting, you ask permission to sit on somebody's bed, especially if they're not from your car, your people. If you're visiting somebody in a cell and they're not part of your group, you actually before you put your ass on their property, you ask permission, can I sit? They tell you yes or no. If not, you gotta sit on the bench in front. And that's just what it is. There's a lot of rules, a lot of regulations in prison that are not seen out here for some reason. I wish sometimes they were because prison actually taught me a lot of things. It taught me a lot about respect. It taught me a lot about looking at men as men, you know, when they earned it, of course. You know, and that's the thing is that there's a hundred movies out there of shock callers, there's a hundred shows, 
all these things, but at the end of the day, man, there's a lot of people that have made mistakes, gone to prison, and had to do what they had to do to survive. I believe in second chances. I believe that there should be a better system to reform these guys, get them out, and make them stay out. So that way they don't end in. Again, people go back 82% by 90 days. And that's the thing, is that you learn to live like that, and then it almost becomes comfortable to go back into prison, be back in the system, move from bullpen to bullpen, end up on the bus, get transferred to black box, end up on the yard. A lot of people sign these agreements just so they could get out the county and end up on the yard, because once you get to the yard, life begins. Pretty much that's what you say, because county time is hard time. Once you get to the yard, it's yard time. You know, but being a shot caller is not an easy job. It is not an easy job, and it is a very hard job sometimes when you actually have to take care of your own people. And most of the time, you're taking care of your own people, and that's very, very hard when you actually have a heart because you spend so much time with these dudes that they become family to you. You eat with them, you shit with them, you work out with them, you shower together, you, you do everything together that they become, so, it becomes such a strong bond that it's hard to make the decisions, but sometimes you have to, and that's it, point blank. You know, there was an incident where we had somebody on the yard that with time and then it ended up being he wasn't he was no good and it was time and it was uh it had to be done man whether you you liked it or not there there are rules and regulations like i said politics and it doesn't it doesn't matter whether it was right or wrong it doesn't matter it has to be done and it's done point blank like i say i share these stories so you can keep your ass out of prison don't go there don't even think about it especially now with these systems that are running now and everything's running wild my name's jc i am ron strong don't judge nobody give somebody a hug stay in your lane live savage and remember you only have one life to live if you live it right you don't have to go to jail and spend time in prison all right guys i'll catch you guys on the rebound